starting with GSK, I mean, I, we, I said it there, jumping before they're, they're pushed, right? It does, uh, it does pretty much feel like that. There's been issues over in China uh, recently. They've uh, previously had fines over in America as well uh, over this. And it's a sort of uh, unregulated area of the drugs market that affects not just GSK, but all of those. It's maybe worth pointing out that back in uh, 2011, AstraZeneca uh, did uh, stop paying uh, doctors to attend their conferences. So they kind of took a, a half step. But uh, GSK very much feel like uh, they've taken the, the full move here. And this feels pretty much like their sort of uh, Jerry Maguire moment where it's laudable all the actions that they're taking here but you uh, you've got to fear that there's going to be some fiscal pain they're going to have to wear for a while sure. until others follow suit yeah and, and you, you talk about others following suit now other companies clearly going to consider similar steps and and may not take such a hit in the share price right that's quite likely to be the, the case here, I think. Um, uh, you know, it, it, maybe it might prevent them uh, getting uh, further court cases down the road and, and might uh, help them certainly in sentiment, uh, but uh, fiscally speaking, sales-wise, etc., it, it'll hurt them. There's no doubt about that. And, and was it China? Was it all about China, this? Well, maybe that was the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, possibly, as, as far as their internal thinking was concerned. Um, but you, you kind of touched on it there. It's a self-regulated area of the, um, the, the business, um, and uh, the drug makers maybe need to make, uh, make some moves here before moves are put upon them. They've maybe taken a little glance at what's happening to the banking sector uh, and decided, you know, enough's enough here. Maybe we need to do something. Um, right. ZEW in Germany, analysts and, uh, and, and investor sentiment, highest, what, since... Well, highest in nearly eight years. Um, you know, we, we've talked, we, we, we've spoken about the growth story, and albeit a, a, the, 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 the anemic growth story in Europe for a while now. Is this the start of something different? Mm, maybe not. It coincides with the fact that Angela Merkel has now been uh, sworn in, as it were, and the, and the last piece of paperwork has now been sorted out as far as her second term in power is concerned. And there's a very stable base with which the uh, German economy is working off of. Having said that, though, uh, one glance uh, around Europe, and it doesn't have to be very far over to, to France, their neighbours, bordering neighbours, uh, and there's, there's still plenty of hurdles to be cleared there. The German economy is looking very strong. It is Angela Merkel being, being put through today, finally, um, and that's dragged on a little bit. Um, so maybe that's part of the equation, uh, but I think um, that there's, there's some bigger issues uh, that are going to affect them out with their own border. But the, but the growth story and the, and the anemic growth story is going to be the story of next year, is it, for the Eurozone still? It certainly feels that way. We're, we will receive tapering of some sort next year, no doubt. That will have an effect on the Eurozone. It seems to have affected the equity markets there a little bit more uh, than, than arguably the US markets when these stories sort of resurface. Um, and you do feel that they, they, they really do need that sort of security net beneath them to uh, feel confident to move on.